Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Luke. I'm here with E, and we are here for what I'm going to call the relaunch of the Take It Deep podcast. I know we did our interview about a month ago with uh, John Updike, former major leaguer, and now um, you know with Baseball Cloud. But we were supposed to have opening day by now. Baseball was supposed to be fucking here, and it's not, and it's bothering both of us. So what we figured we would do. Because there's no sports, there's no nothing, but this is supposed to be baseball season by now. Yeah. So we figured we'd run down every division, not in one day, because no one's trying to get a Joe Rogan length baseball episode when there's no baseball. I don't think, and I don't think we have enough weed and whiskey. That's also true. Uh, and nor do we have Joey Diaz. But what we do have is six divisions that need going over because. Most teams in baseball have at least one or two moves in this specific offseason worth talking about, plus players that are on the rise, you know, things, you know, every team's got something interesting. It's just a question of who are you a fan of? Who are you looking for? Chances are, if you listen to, if you're a Jones for Sports member via Patreon, Facebook, et cetera, you're probably like a Yankee Met guy. Most of our people tend to be in the tri-states. But if you're not, don't worry. We're going through all 30 teams over the next six weeks, uh, followed up with playoff predictions and award winners and some other fun shit along the way. Some trade predictions could be thrown in there. Whatever y'all want. If you're a Patreon member, which if you're not by now, you're wasting your fucking time. You're in quarantine. You ain't got shit else to watch. Why not? But if you are a Patreon member, this will be included in your membership. We're not asking for additional money, but if you want to get involved with this program, submitting topics, submitting material, you know, anything baseball related, all you got to do is just type it in and hit submit. It ain't that hard. Yeah, that's it. Take a dollar and you get a shout out. So without further ado, me and E are going to break down the NL West. We figure we'll end with the AL East in six weeks. We'll, we'll cover everything. Don't worry. But the NL, NL West specifically had, a, I'm not going to say an odd number of movement over the course of the year, but you Weird saw number. a lot of teams doing a lot, and then you had some teams do literally nothing. And I'm going to start with the team that did literally nothing. It's the Colorado Rockies. Or, or like, like you have it, uh, the team that probably just pissed off their superstar. Yeah, all they did, and I quote, as I wrote it here on my notes, was did nothing but fuck with Arenado. Um, if you live under a rock and you don't know by now that Nolan Arenado is far and away the best third baseman in baseball, I can't help you with that. Obviously, he has to probably be maybe top three or top five best all-around player. Oh yeah, no, he's he's he does it on both sides of the both sides of the game. Right, he's a consistent at bare minimum. 280, 110, 30, 35. gold glove defense. And he's – and he, and he, Right, and he's the nutsack of that entire organization. Yeah. There's no reason to piss that guy off. He's the best player in franchise history. I'm sorry to Todd Helton and Larry Walker. Arenado is the best player in franchise history. Yeah, and to me, the, the whole thing – well, obviously – we're referring to them trying to trade him this winter, if Correct. nobody's clear on that. To me, it makes no sense. Is literally a year after signing him to the big contract, mm-hmm. me and you as Yankee fans probably feel like that had a lot to do with Machado not landing with the Yankees. Correct. And them having fear, because I think the reports were out that the Yankees preferred Arenado over Machado anyway. Correct. So you sign him to this crazy extension, mm-hmm. everything. Obviously, you didn't do nothing in the season. He didn't win. Right. You were where you were a year ago. So you think about trading him? And to be fair, if, if that team was capable of signing any starting pitching, nobody wants to go there. Colorado, Colorado and Baltimore are the two places in baseball where ERAs go to die. <laughs> um, there's a reason guys like Adovino, the second they hit free agency, get the fuck out of Colorado. A bit, but I, I mean, I think I know where you're going. Is if you have any shot at signing a pitcher, common sense would be to have the best fucking third baseman in baseball there. 
Correct. And not to mention a top three shortstop next to him. Exactly. So for what it's worth, there, there's so many ramifications as to why you don't fuck with Arenado. You don't, if you're going to trade him, then fucking trade him. Exactly. Don't have it out there. Yeah. Either, right. Either do it or don't. And then make up your mind and then live yeah. with the consequences. And, and then to me, it's, it's kind of like you did it, but we all, we've heard the rumors of maybe just the Braves. I think the Cardinals, like two teams, like yeah. If you're gonna have them out there, you call every team up. Yeah, really. You call everybody. Uh huh. Call the Yankees and say, "Oh, we see you had a nice, yeah, Gio Rochelle is nice, but you can have Arenado." Right. You can have the cream of the crop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's Give what me your have. best offer. Uh huh. You know, and I think if anything, these last couple off seasons showed us is like. These teams who aren't the big market teams are just looking to dangle their superstars out there. For, and I think it's in, in the end run, it's not going to help because if you don't move these guys and then you're going to have to re-sign them, you think yeah. you're going to say, all right, I'll give you a hometown discount? Yeah. You, it's you, like the American League, you got the Indians doing the same thing with probably the best shortstop in baseball in fucking Francisco mm-hmm. Lindor. Yeah, I, I don't understand – and, and, again, the Rocky situation with Arenado almost seems like a microcosm of just what's going on with star players on teams that don't deserve them. Door with the Indians is a perfect example. Yeah. But, I, you know, to bring it back to Colorado, you sign them to, like, a seven- or eight-year extension on a team-friendly price. They kept that under $300 million. Yeah. And to me, I think the only, the only reason why I think – and. To me, what's what's helping these teams with the players signing these long-term extensions is Mm -hmm. is how fucking crazy free agency's been. Yeah. Having having Machado and Harper, two guys in their Mm mid-20s, not signed till fucking late February, early March. Yeah, that ain't helping. It's scaring guys. So that's why they probably figured, I'm going to take this big money that's being offered to me now. Yeah. And and go by then. Right. And at this point... Now you have goal for you know Garrett Cole signed for three hundred and twenty four million for nine. Rendon got three hundred million. Yeah. So now free it seems like it's back to normal. Yeah. Which, thank God, because the last two off seasons have sucked. Yeah. Where things come and go and nothing happens. And to be honest, if you look at it, these next upcoming off seasons are only going to be bigger and better players. With how many of these guys that are still young who are the superstars of the game? Mm hmm. One hundred percent. You know, look, us as Yankee fans, we hear, what was the big thing going into the offseason? Oh, they probably don't want to pay Cole that much because they got to pay Judge. You got to pay Sanchez. You got to labor in a couple more years. Yep. So I think it, it, it free agency should be getting back to where it's been. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's getting there. And I, I've had a, a, a stance on this where there's labor negotiations coming, and I believe a of course, year. Yeah. So you got to start paying these, these guys just so you don't have a strike. Cause Everyone loses with a strike. And now, and now, just to even take it another way, don't you think with Nike taking over the merchandise deal, that's going to only have jerseys and merchandise flying off the shelves? I mean, look what it does for the NFL. Look what it did for college football. Look what it did for the NBA the last two seasons with jerseys. That's right. I forgot their Nike, too. Yeah, point, yo. Know, and, and not only look what Nike did specifically – for, for the actual, like, for the players, the merchandise sales, they're making some of these jerseys. And we'll get to a, a team that rebranded in a bit, but you're, you're seeing teams like the Brewers, for example, or the Blue Jays are going back to their gorgeous powder blues. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> so, in summation, Rockies, all yeah. you did was piss off the best player in franchise history. Um, you don't deserve Arenado. If you lose Arenado, which you now 100% will at some point, because you're going to trade him, and if he lasts the duration of that contract, you ain't keep him. I don't see him finishing the 2021 season there. Nor do I. I it, I'll give it because this season, whenever it fucking starts, is going to be shortened as it is, so I'll give it to trade deadline next season. Yeah, right. Yeah, that, that's, that's fair. The one trickle-down effect I'm looking out for is – you're going to lose Arenado before the end of that deal. The second that happens, you might as well kiss Trevor Story goodbye too because he ain't fucking staying there either. That's no, his protection. They, they, 
what did they sign him to a short a short term just to avoid arbitration? I think right. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's still on like his rookie deal. Yeah. So they're just keeping they're giving him raises, but based on performance. Yeah. Similar to what Bellinger and Judge and and yeah. other young guys yeah. are getting. Yeah. So Rockies, you didn't do shit. The one player to look out for in a shortened season, in my opinion, it still has to be Arenado. Because he's good, you know he's he's so good, he's so consistent. You like I, every year in fantasy, he's one of those guys I try and get in the first two rounds because I know he's gonna hit me at least two eighty. He's, he's gonna, gonna give you he's, he's gonna give you MVP numbers. Basically, yeah. He's just not gonna get the credit because they're gonna say Coors Field. Correct. And the Rockies realistically probably ain't making the playoffs either. And yes, we're getting to standings predictions later. Moving on. To, in my opinion, the most active team in this offseason. I agree. The Arizona Diamondbacks. I agree with you 100%. So let's let's do a, a quick little rundown of what Arizona did. Because I got to admit, they probably had the sneaky best offseason. And to me, what made the offseason better for them is actually during last season and getting that Grinky contract out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that well, yeah, that freed up a lot of money for them. Plus, the players they got back from Houston are going to be studs. Oh yeah, I mean, um, we were we were against Arizona last year because you know we 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 wanted fucking Robbie Ray and we wanted yeah the farm system for him. Well, yeah, they, well, they tried to trade rape us for Robbie Ray, which yeah. is not happening. Well, which is you know, I give Cashman his credit, but nah, yeah, yeah, the the players they got, I give I give them a lot of credit for the shit they did. Yeah, I mean we'll start we'll start with the small ones. Uh you extended Nick Ahmed, who if you're a fan of gold glove defense but no hitting, this is that's your guy. That, that that's what he is. It's what he basically is. Basically what Anderson Simmons was in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Perfect comp. Also, this is the guy that and you mentioned this before we started rolling. This is who they let up Didi Gregorius for to bring mm-hmm. him up and clear the spot. So, Ahmed, great player, love the defense, can hit for shit, but he doesn't have to because his lineup around him is potent. Um, second big thing from them, acquire Starling Marte from the Pirates. Which love helps. This. Loves this. I love this too, oh. and, it, and it helps replace uh, Souza Jr. Yeah, he was – he he can't His, When help. he first got there, he was a good bat for them. But Correct. Then he, yeah, he got hurt, and then – it caught up to him. He became the the player we've seen him in Tampa for. Right. But I like the Marte. Be, Marte. Uh, you know, I know he had up and downs in Pittsburgh, especially yeah. after McCutcheon left. You yeah. know, all the attention was like put on him to be the guy there, and it just didn't work out. Yeah. Well, the other thing in, in, in next week's episode when we do the NL Central, I have a whole Pirates rant because I. As, as someone who was born in Pittsburgh, I fucking – the Pirates drive me nuts. But there's, – there's, there's some failed, failed moves there that I want to talk about as well. Oh, yeah. Um, but the Marte deal is huge for the other main purpose of you bring the best player no one knows about in that division back to his natural position. Oh, yeah, the breakout star that division last year. Yeah, all star Cattell Marte. Yeah, can finally return. He can play. He plays a decent center. He's not bad there. He's but got the feet in the arm. Right, a second baseman's never going to have a center fielder's arm. There's yeah. no shot. He's, got the he's not there because he's quick and he can run down fly balls. And in that that ballpark is cavernous as shit to center. I get why he's out there, but Marte is a perfect fit. Because yeah. for anyone who, specifically my MLB The Show players, that left center field kind of triples triangle out by the bullpen in PNC Park, yo, that's not a normal wall at yeah. all. It's just the outfield there is really kind of weird. Arizona's no different. You, It's cavernous. There's no triples triangle. It's just a big fucking outfield. And you just got to fucking triple off the bat over there. Right. Marte is going to be able to – Starling Marte – is going to be able to run shit down. Yeah. That's huge. Um, the other, not so much big one, but a quality depth signing, 
you get Cole Calhoun off the Angels on a hometown deal because he's an Arizona boy. Um, yeah, I mean, Calhoun, his, range, his range is diminished a little, definitely a little yes, bit. You know, and of good. course, it helped playing with the best player in fucking baseball yeah. to, to your right and Trout over the last couple of years. But Calhoun, Calhoun's still a decent outfielder. Right. You know, he's not going to be a gold glover, but he'll make the plays he has to make, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That at times, he, obviously, he's one of those guys who's like not known for hitting, right? But he's decent enough. Well, at this point in Calhoun's career, exactly, he's a depth piece in case a guy like David Peralta needs a day off because they don't have the luxury of a DH. Yeah. Depth in the National League means everything. Also, you can play matchups where if you got a guy that Peralta just can't hit. Maybe a Walker Bueller, that type of guy. Well, yeah, um, that's the one thing we could say. But this division is filled with pitching. Yeah, and so not only and not and not only at the major league level, but we're, exactly. we're getting to that. Um, the player on this team to look out for, as mentioned, Cattell Marte. Kudos to baseball fans that if there was any, there's always a couple people who seem to get snubbed from all-star voting every year. And I'm not a, a big fan of the fan voting for the all-star. I hate it. it Cause it's, it's, it's always a popularity Listen, contest. I, I go back to the year where the Royals were the defending champs. Yep. And I think every position player led the voting, uh-huh. which is ridiculous. I think Omar Infante was their second baseman. Yeah. Was I, like two fourteen, And he was like, yep. Horrible. But, no, um, yeah, Marte, definitely. But before you – the one thing we didn't mention, obviously, the signing of oh, shit, right. How the fuck did I forget Bumgarner? I mean, the guy who's, like, probably top two pitcher in that division's history. I mean, he's second best playoff pitcher of all time. The only one who I've ever seen was more lights out was Andy Pettit. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, and that's not me being a Yankee homer. Look the fucking stats up. Um has a proclivity for hitting <laughs> so you re- you replace Grinky's bat with a better pitching a better hitting pitcher rather yeah i think um, i think Grinky did better was field the ball correct well Grinky's a gold glover yeah Grinky's a mad bum yeah ma- mad bum See, arizona's one of those teams and you'll hear me say that this guy's like the nutsack of a team mm-hmm. into arenado Bumgarner, the second he landed in Phoenix, was became the nutsack of that team. Yeah, that's your guy. That's your attitude. And if they do make a playoff run, or may, let's say a wild card game, which is probably more in their realistic probability, mm-hmm. you're you're throwing him a hundred percent. Fuck, Robin oh, yeah, Grant. you're throwing him in whatever key right. game you need. Right, exactly. So he's pitching it, game one of whatever. Ex- right. Exactly right. Um, so, yeah, kudos to them. Also, I am amazed and shockingly disappointed. And I'll, I'll, we're gonna, I'll save that for the, for the next team. But kudos to stealing him away from a division rival. Yeah. That, that's your indicator for who I'm fucking going to talk about or who we're going to talk about next. But kudos to just pry him away because I thought for sure he was going to go home to Atlanta. Yeah, that to me, I thought he was going to be definitely like a Southern team. I know there was all the, the talk of, obviously, American League, the big team was the Twins. You're right. I didn't see him being a, a Minnesota type of guy. Mm-mm. No, he's, he's a – Madison Bumgarner is uh, – to, to personify the level of dirty redneck that is Madison Bumgarner, it was revealed that in the offseason, I believe two years ago, he was competing in competitive rodeo and, yeah. and, and cattle roping. If that ain't, if that's not the most Georgia fucking thing of all time, I, I don't know what is. And um, congrats on in Arizona for having his uh, horse stables, but you know, allowing that to lure him in. Yeah, really? Yeah. Way, way to bend over backwards for a guy who honestly has earned the right to be bent over backwards for at this point. Yeah. And again, 
the Giants didn't deserve him anymore because they're going into uh, the dark days, and we're getting to there. We're we're we're, we're making our way there. Yeah. But yeah, Arizona, the player you got to look out for. Me and E have already said this like eight times. And Marte. Cattell Marte might be the best player in baseball that nobody knows about. The only one who I will make the argument is better and lesser known is Whit Merrifield. Cattell Marte, absolute stud, to, so much so that I actually took the time to write down his stat line from last year, just to, just to put things into perspective here. We're talking 329 average, 389 uh, on-base percentage, which is fucking awesome. Yeah. OPS at 981, which is astoundingly good. 32 home runs, 92 RBIs, and the ever-popular war stat, 7.2. And, and I just want to say, let's say you take him from there. Let's say you put him on the Yankees. This is a guy who's going to bat leadoff or second or possibly in the bottom of the line. Correct. On a stack, on a better team, he's not batting third or fourth. Correct. Yeah, that is true. And again, 92 RBIs out of a top two guy in that order, also good. It speaks to how deep that lineup is, sneaky deep. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on to the, uh, the basement of this division. It's funny how you say that because I was just going to say, to me, probably the worst team in this division. And the reason why I say that, this is the most old school team yeah. where right now what they're going to reminds me of what the Yankees and Phillies went through, of having nothing but older, expensive players, which you should have got rid of years ago. Mm-hmm. And what did they do? Instead of getting rid of some of those players, they just added another one yeah. on and a guy yeah. who's been washed up for years in Longoria. Mm-hmm. You know, the biggest move they made was sign Hunter Pence, bringing an older guy back. Yeah, and that that's literally just to keep the fans coming because, I mean, let's just be real. You're trying to recapture the glory of those, like, those every other World Series teams. You need to stop. Like, you, need to get, you need to get Posey out of – you need to get him out of fucking catcher. Brandon Belt might be your only tradable player, and that's iffy. Crawford's done it short. Panic's gone. Sandoval signed a minor league deal with the Giants, so he's his fat ass is gone. The only player on this team worth giving a shit about is Mike Yastrzemski. Yeah. He's the only young, exciting guy, because their other young, exciting guy they had, they traded to fucking Tampa for Longoria. And then even if you think about it, even if especially like the top of their rotation is yeah. older dudes. Oh, oh Edo, no. Samarja. You want to know how bad this team is going to be this year? They're excited about getting Johnny Cueto back. <laughs> Johnny Cueto, ever since he was on the Reds at that wild card game in Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, they, all they said was Cueto. Got yeah, and he dropped the ball, and, and, then got, and then the next pitch got, I believe, Russell Martin took him deep. Ever since, he's just been a shit show. Why they paid him that much money, I don't understand. And you know it's bad, and I get it. You know, Cueto being Dominican, he comes from an island where there's a lot of talent. But the World Baseball Classic team won't even touch you. Yeah. That says everything. To that, to a guy like Cueto, if the Dominican team don't want you, peace. Yeah, to me, the Giants are just a team stuck, up, stuck with bad contracts. New, well, yeah, they're, yeah, for some reason, they're content with being the, um, the geriatric ward of, of the MLB right now. I don't know why any team in 2020 is content with operating like that. Yeah. But I, but to be fair, I mean, that's a, that's a team with money. Yeah. Farhan Zaidi, who built the current Dodgers, is their GM. And, He's even he is handicapped by how shitty this team was was assembled by the previous asshole in charge. Yeah, because who's gonna now to to do you know what what could be done? Who's gonna touch any of those contracts? Nobody. Literally nobody. And by the way, 
this Hunter Pence signing is going to fail immensely because Hunter Pence last year was a DH. Exactly. He's a terrible fielder. Like, it, it, everything as uh, is going to be brought to back to the Yankees a lot, especially because me and you are Yankee fans. Yeah, right. What was one of the things talked about? Bad contract for bad contract. Ellsbury for Samarja. Ellsbury for Cueto. And even us as Yankee fans was like, as much as we hated Ellsbury, no thank you. Yeah, yeah really. Um, news flash. Don't expect much from the Giants. They're going to suck. It doesn't matter if we play a 60-game season, a 100-game season, a 10-game season. They're going to suck. Mm-hmm. Don't be excited. The only guy worth giving a shit about, like as mentioned before, Mike Yastrzemski. Yeah, I don't know. And even that's a stretch. There's nothing other than Giants that jumps out to me like, oh, yeah. No. The dark days are here for the Giants, and they are not going away anytime soon. Because if I if I remember reading correctly, I believe Baseball America has them as one of the five worst systems in baseball, too, which is also bad because I know for a fact the Padres have a top two system which yeah. we will get to when we get to the Padres. And the Dodgers always have a good system. Yeah. The Dodgers farm system is the equivalent of fucking Niagara Falls, and it's infuriating. But if yeah. you can't at least keep up and or do right. anything the Diamondbacks did, trade a player like Grinky for good Houston prospects because their scouting within the last eight years has been impact. Yeah. I mean, like the Giants, the, the, the fucking Dodgers, every time there's a, a, a star player on the block, it's always the Dodgers of the team. That is brought up because they have the fucking prospects. Correct. Case in point, and and we'll, we'll 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 get to the Dodgers in due time. The San Diego Padres. This team I like. It's hard not to. This team. Like this it. team. Okay. So again, every year the Padres are, and I I respect AJ Preller, their GM, for a couple reasons. Number one, he's taking a team that's normally not considered a big spender. And at least acts as though his team matters, yeah. which is good. Because obviously all 30 teams matter. We're not saying your team is completely insignificant. But in that division, the Padres haven't really been a thing mm-hmm. since, like, 98. Yeah, funny. And just, just before you go on, another team shout out for going back to the throwback colors. These fucking Padre uniforms, if you have not looked them up, the brown and are the... fucking gorgeous. Got out of that fucking navy blue and all that shit. I didn't mind. I didn't mind the fucking navy. It was that goofy sand color. Like we yeah. get it. You're San Diego. Like there's beaches everywhere. Yeah. But like, and I think they're keeping the the the, the navy camo for the camo, Marine, yeah. For I camp- do that on Sundays, yeah. Yeah, but everything else is back to the brown and gold. It's and they threw a pinstripe in the away jersey, which is fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Trust me on this. It it's it for for the younger fan who's not aware of like the Dave Winfield days in San Diego, you're you it, it might look like a slow pitch softball jersey at first. Trust me on this. Yeah, no, nah, definitely not. Top notch. I'm considering getting that fitted, by the way. Because that 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 fitted is a they, all they did was try and knock off like the fucking Yankees with the with the navy and the white the last yeah. like twelve years exactly now, brown and gold that shit is fire I'm, I I and also what's not to love about this fucking lineup Manny Machado my by the way. My, my favorite he was a rookie last year but like young guy oh God. Tatis Junior oh, Tatis Junior he's a stud. Him and Acuna might be the two most entertaining players to watch. It, it, whoever, whoever follows the Jones for Sports pages, a couple a couple months ago has put up. Who do you think is going to have the best? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, we did talk about. I, I was one of the people who put Tatis Junior. You remember who I put? I think I might have put Tatis Ju, uh, Junior too. I know everybody was big on you know Vladdy Junior. Yeah, fuck that. But like this kid. His rookie year, he missed a lot of games due to injury. Yeah, he had a, a spinal, some sort of like stress fracture in his back. He hit 317 as a rookie. Uh-huh. With 22 home runs. In a pitcher's park. And let's not forget to mention, for a team that signed Machado and said, nah, man, you got to move to third because this kid's playing short. Bingo. 
That's huge. If I'm Tatis, because of that showing of faith, I might never leave. And frankly, if there was any team in baseball, if I was in that position, I could sign with any team that wasn't the Yankees, I'm signing to the fucking Padres. Guess and what? You're never going to have a home game get rained out. It's the most. It's one of the most beautiful cities in America. And the kid, the, love? the kid defensively is sick. Everything is sick. Got a fucking cannon for an arm. Correct. The glove is there. It yep. doesn't hurt that they got a gold glove first baseman who can scoop it. Hasn't really hit since he got there in Hosmer. But Thank he can you. scoop the shit out of the Words fucking. Words right ball. out of my mouth. Hosmer since he got there. Has been, this is year three. Boomer bust. Bust. Correct. But the glove is always there. He's yeah. never going to be a bad defensive first baseman. But ever since the fucking 2017 uh, WBC or yeah. Yeah, 2018, right down the fucking tubes with the hitting. Um, I like the pickup of Tommy Pham. Yes, that, that trade needs to be – well, they actually double-dipped with Tampa. Yeah, because they got the pitcher. They got Emilio Pagan, which is huge because that was one of Tampa's main openers. Yeah. But Fam, here's the difference. They gave up Fam for Hunter Renfro, who, in my opinion, Fam is far and away the better player. Yeah, and he's younger. Correct. Um, the only problem you might have with Fam is durability, but I think you take him away from the Tampa turf, yeah. and I think he'll you'll see him get back to the St. Louis production and, and durability. Yeah. Um. Fam is one of those guys. Again, if you're a fantasy baseball player, you know exactly what I'm getting at with this. Fam's one of those guys who goes usually in the top five rounds. He just gets on base. It's what he does. He just yeah. finds ways. And he's used to hitting in shitty parks like Tampa. I mean, St. Louis is not a terrible hitter's park, but Tampa's fucking bad. The fucking worst. Tampa the worst stadium. In baseball. Well, yes, but it's also a notorious pitcher park. Yeah. Which now you're going to the NL version of Tampa, which and is perfect for him. He can just shoot doubles, triples into the gap. Yeah. What I like about it too is it finally gives Will Myers a fucking spot. Yeah. We don't have to move him to first, to third, to center, to left. Leave him in right fucking field, and that's it. Well, also stop pretending he can play anything but right field. Exactly. He, Will like, Myers. This is. Is it? It's funny. I'm I'm going through my head. It almost seems like San Diego and Tampa are just constantly in on each other's guys. Yeah. Which is ironic because they're the two best farm systems in baseball. Yeah. But yeah, Will Myers was like the first guy to go a while ago. He's been okay, but again, just being in San Diego, you become you tend to become an afterthought. Yeah. Now that Tatis and Machado were there, Chris Paddock is a fucking stud. Yeah, that, before we hit their rotation, I just want to say, I, I was reading today that it was saying they might possibly have the best bullpen in baseball. Um, I I know we can put it up agree. because we have a bullpen we can fucking talk about as well. Yeah, but they have the they might have the best closer. Yeah, Kirby mm -hmm. Yates is. Yeah. He found Kirby something as soon as he got there. In my opinion, they never should have traded Brad Hand. Yeah, I see that. Because Francisco Mejia, ever since he got there, has been dog. Hedges did nothing. And at least with Austin Hedges, you're getting phenomenal defense with no bat. Yeah. But that's all you – you'll take that out of a catcher. Yeah, a me, Austin Hedges is a typical NL West catcher. Mm hmm Yeah. That, that's like the – yeah, case in point. Chris Iannetta in Colorado. All global. Iannetta, A.J. Ellis yep. in, in the Dodgers. The king – of great defense, no bat. Jeff Mathis, the last few years in Arizona. Yeah. Has no value, but will never leave baseball, you know, unless it's on his own terms, because yeah. he's the best pitch framer in baseball. And Austin Hedges, probably one of the five most athletic catchers in baseball. Mejia is the total opposite. He's basically the NL version of Gary Sanchez. Yeah. And they, um, just to round out before we go to their rotation, I know you have a lot of, like, for their rotation. I guess second base is going to be open for them between yeah. uh, Dozier and Profar. Yeah. I I don't know why they traded Luis Arias. And no. I was to the Brewers. Yeah. That trade didn't make a lot of sense to me. 
And then at center, I don't know what they're going to do. If they're going to go with Ligaris, um, who's a gold glove center fielder for sure. I mean, yeah. That's another dude with no bat. Yeah. I, in that division, though, you got to be able to hit one through seven. Exactly. You can get away with tucking your worst bat, but a gold glover There's caliber. There's good pitching in that division for you to have five guys. Yeah. No, that's – that's 100% true. Um, and I, trading Manny Margot was um, – I didn't get that. Oh, that makes sense. They uh, – yeah, they – god damn, they have so many guys in their fucking farm system. But, no, Alan Trammell is probably going to play center field. Okay. Again, he's not bad. Just Margot was the Padres version, ironically, of Jerickson Profar. Overhyped. Yeah. Never lived up to it. Yep. A terrible leadoff guy, didn't have the on base, didn't have the eye to even draw walks. Contact yeah. was inconsistent. Average was under 250. Yeah. And the defense was never. Wasn't Profar like the top prospect in baseball a couple years ago? Uh, yeah. When he was still with Texas, him and, yeah. him and Elvis Andrews were supposed to be like the greatest one two up the middle combo in the game. Profar just never got. Around I think that the, the 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 early injury really threw him off track. Yeah, I'm gonna make the argument that Jerickson Profar peaked in the Little League World Series. <laughs> Which, if you're the number one prospect in baseball, that's just that's just not so, not acceptable. Obviously, obviously, we talked all about their position players and lineup and everything. Yes, I know you have a lot of like you hold their pitching rotation to a nice standard. Uh, we okay. already spoke about <laughs> Paddock. Paddock yeah. is phenomenal. Paddock's a stud. By the way, that's another former Marlin trade that they fucked up. Miami, not the Padres. Oh, of course not. Um, I – see, here's the thing. Paddock excites me, but he doesn't. Because I know, I know what Paddock is at this point. I know he's going to be put on a fucking innings limit. Yeah. They have a new manager, which not worth mentioning because they shouldn't have fired Andy Green anyway. Mackenzie Gore is the guy I need to see. If you want me excited about that rotation, give me Gore or give me nothing. Yeah. Because Joey Lucchese is okay. Like, I get it. Like, Dilson, Dilson Lamette or Danellis, I forget how you say his name. He's got that weird. Yeah. Lamette is a good pitcher. Yes. Just he's on the upswing. He's, I, would, I would equate Lamette to what. Herman Marquez for the Rockies was supposed to be last year where you could expect a big peak coming. The question is, is he actually going to get, you know, and take the strides? Okay. P- Paddock's the clear ace. Lucchese's yeah. a good fifth. I need Gore. There's no reason to hold Mackenzie Gore back anymore. There's just not. No. I mean, you already got a young enough team. Yeah. Just keep like, bringing them up. Just do it. Like, Nobody's expecting you guys to fucking win it. Also true. Your expectations are low. Go shock people. If you want to shock us, get him up there, see what he's got, and try to win a wild card. Right. Yeah. Because I guess with moving forward to the fucking team that everybody has as probably the best team in baseball. Yeah, this is uh, – the Dodgers are going to be so – They fun. only got fucking stronger. Yeah. You know, and – we get, let's go to it. The Dodgers, obviously, the big yeah. movie, Mookie Betts. We're happy about him getting out of Boston. For sure. Yeah, appreciate that one. I'm not happy that it took fucking Price to go with him. You know, he's a he was a well, nice. Yeah, Yankee Gary player. needed batting practice. Yeah. But um, David Price. Let let let's just clear the air with David Price. David Price to me seems like the kind of guy that'll just thrive in L.A. just because. Especially with knowing he'll be the fucking three or four. Yeah, there's no pressure. He's not the number two behind Sale. He's of at most their thir- their number three behind Bueller and Kershaw. Betts fascinates me. Yeah. For like eight thousand different reasons. Um specifically because I, I him being a righty coming from Fenway, if you just hit the ball high enough, that fence is not deep. LA's a fucking big pitcher's park. So now again, Mookie is a good enough player where he doesn't need to, you know, rely on a home run stroke. Yeah. 
Like, you know, Boston, just pepper the wall. Not here. Shoot the line, shoot the gap. Just shoot it back up the box for all I care. Yeah. Mookie's going to be productive. That's what he is. What's fright? what's actually not frightening, terrifying, is him and Bellinger in the same outfield is That's you. Getting. The, I'm calling it now because, again, and people forget they've had depth for years with Kike Hernandez, Chris Taylor. They got rid of Verdugo, which they had to. You're not running on that outfield. You're just not. Oh, no, the arms are there. No, Bellinger might have the best. Bellinger has a top three arm in baseball. Betts, nothing gets by him. He's already won, like, two gold gloves. Bellinger just won one. And Kike Hernandez is an underrated fielder. Yeah, to be honest, to me, the only reason why Betts wasn't spoken about defensively enough, he was probably playing with the best defensive center fielder in baseball and Jackie Bradley. Yeah, JBJ has the best arm in in in, in and the that's a dude who gets to every ball. Yeah, it you really got to smoke one to beat JBJ. You know how many times I see something hit there and I'm like, I see him running. I said, "Fuck." Yeah. Yep. No, but yeah, like, but Mookie's no slouch. Mm-mm. And, and to be honest, a dude that in a pinch, if they really need it, they can probably throw him at second base for an inning or two. Uh, yeah. Well, in it. And, and again, Dave Roberts, great manager. NL situations are going to call for odd double switches. Mm-hmm. Mookie, as you mentioned, did come up as a second baseman. Yeah. So it wouldn't shock me if he goes into every game with two different mitts. Yeah. Why not? Me? If okay. you're the Dodgers and, you're, and you know you're going to be that good, barring some catastrophic meltdown, why not? Give him – one or two innings a month. Why not? And you figure in that infield, you got Corey Seager, who's good. Mm-hmm. Justin Turner over at third. Still good. Muncy's going to be, I guess, their starting first baseman. Uh, yeah, he's going to have to be. Yeah. You know, so it's like you don't really have a lot of holes defensively there. No, because they have so much fucking depth. It, 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 it legitimately annoys me. And then it only – to even to, to even, you want to bring the word depth up, you talk about their rotation, and it's the same exact fucking thing. Yeah. Losing Ryu doesn't even hurt them. No, not at all. They just replaced him with Price. Losing Maeda doesn't hurt because they still have Dustin May and Gonsolin. And they probably got the best young pitcher in baseball in yep. Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller. Ugh. They're, they're disgusting. There's no flaw. If there's very few teams in baseball right now that I can make an argument have zero flaws, they're they're the first team in my head. Yeah. Um, and then, I can, oh, say, and then, thing I can say I'm glad is that they didn't fucking land Lindor. Yeah, right. We all oh my God, yes. Uh, the other thing worth noting, speaking of lack of flaw, you signed Blake Trinan to solidify the back of your bullpen, which was your problem last year. Yeah, getting to Jensen. Yeah, uh, Jansen, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Kenley Jansen. He seems like the kind of guy where him and Edwin Diaz, I think, share a mentality where if he blows, let's say, two saves in two weeks, his confidence is shot. Yeah. Or if the cutter's not moving. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. To me, it all depends on that cutter. Yeah, because, I mean, right, he, he's, he's like a, a Mariano, poor man's Mariano with the, with the one pitch that he throws real fucking well. Yeah. Um, fun fact, Kenley Jansen. You remember the 2013 Emma uh, WBC? He was a catcher. Yeah, for the Netherlands. I forgot. I compl- I saw highlights the other day. I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> Talking about a stacked team. Uh huh. Oh yeah, and by the way, fucking um, Gavin Lux is also there. Yep. Who's an absolute stud. Their whole team is loaded. Yeah, and then it's like with them, as soon as somebody goes down, they pluck somebody from the minors, and he's up there, and he's like yeah. the next big thing. Mm-hmm. So let's get well, – what to, what to watch for? We've kind of already, like, mentioned it. I'll, I'll say for me what to watch for will be how does Bellinger bill off an of MVP season? Yeah, that's – that's a that's Now that's a with, with, a, with a bat in Mookie, <coughs> a right-handed bat. So. Yeah. That surrounds him. Yeah, you give him more protection, he gets more frightening. Exactly. 
And Mookie's always been a high on base guy anyway. He'll draw walks. He's going to get his hits. He doesn't have to be the home run guy. No. Which I think favors bets anyway. Yeah. He's more and of a then, drive gap to gap hitter. Right. And you're going to have to pitch to Mookie, which is terrifying because you're not going to pitch to Bellinger. If you do, you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't have picked that any better. The outfield combo with them in the corners is going to be disgusting. The back to back in the order, disgusting. Everything disgusting. Um, predictions on standings. Let me know if you agree, disagree, or see eye to eye here. Fifth place is going to be the Giants, and it's going to be that way for at least the next five years. Yep. Fourth place is going to be the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, they didn't do nothing. Yeah, they do nothing in Connecticut. You, you have two players worth worth mentioning, and mm-hmm. that's it to me. Yeah, basically. Uh, this this part of it is up for debate. And for me, right here, I know you'll probably go the other way, but I'm going to say for me, second and third, I say Arizona three, and I just like the Padres enough to put them at two. Here's so here here's I'm happy you disagree with me on this. Right now, based upon the opening day projections, the Padres don't or don't look like they have gore in the rotation. Okay. If they decide to sack up and call him up, yeah, I'll give the Padres the two. Yeah. He's that good. If they don't, Arizona, I think, is it maybe two, three games. I, I just look at it as you'll have Tatis mm-hmm. for the season now. You, you know what I mean? The the, the bat of fam helps them there. Yeah. And Manny I've can't be that bad. Yeah. Manny's, Manny, Manny had the year that I think – most, especially AL East fans, kind of expected. He's He was coming from a division where every park except for Tampa is a notorious hitter's park. Specifically Camden Yards, which not Coors, Camden is the most home run prone field in the entire Major League Baseball. Yeah. Then you put him in arguably the worst hitting park in baseball, for yeah. sure in that division. Mm-hmm. You knew the power numbers, the RBIs, and the average were going to go down. You, yeah. just did. you knew it. Yeah. Now, granted, he's got, what, seven more years to figure out how to, how to pepper Western Metal Supply Company? Mm-hmm. And just shoot the wall? Fuck, Bartolo Colon can hit it out there. Man, he should have no problem. Oh, yeah, he'll get it. Yeah, he's too good. He's just he's too fucking talented to, to, to not figure this out. He's a guy who swing like. I mean, he's going to be compared a lot to the success Bryce Harper has just because they were the two guys in that class. But, like, his swing is he can go the opposite way. He's a oh, line. Yeah. He, can, he hits more line drives. You yeah, know, Manny, Manny, this is an interesting debate, and I wish we had this show when they were on the market. Yeah. But if you look at pure talent, him it's and Bryce incredible. are very different but oddly similar. Like, if, if you need – a guy who's going to give you effort, a dingers, Harper's your guy. If you need that guy who's going to play with finesse but annoy you every time he puts the ball on the ground, it's Machado. Yeah. But Machado's play style is like butter. It's just smooth. Machado's play type is the type of, I know I'm better than everybody on the field with me. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's him and Tatis are a very swag yeah. section of an infield where yeah. they just – Everything is like they're gonna make the difficult play look easy, right? Exactly. It's like Domingo Ayala's wet dream. You're gonna see nothing nothing but deep backhanded stops and the the, to see the ball being fucking thrown 107 miles per hour across the field. Yeah, right. No, and and a good first baseman to to fix their fuck ups. Yeah. I, th- I mean, there's really not much to not like. I mean, like I said, their lineup can compete. I'm not worried about – even Frankie Cordero can, is going to hit probably 35 home runs, but he's going to hit you 240. Yeah. I'm not worried about the Padres producing, especially with Margot gone. Yeah. I just – I something tells me Gore is going to make that much of a difference. He is that good. You know – and you know I'm right. But as it stands, based on projections, I got to go with the Diamondbacks. Starling Marte is a great fucking player. Yeah. 
Bet I mean, fans we, are pissed because <laughs> they were supposed to get him. All, all season was him to the Mets, him to the Mets. Yeah. And then, of course, and again, I will save my pirate frustrations for next week. Oh, but for fuck's sake, it took nothing to get him. Nothing. Literally nothing. It took three – it took, I believe, two double A guys in a single layer, or one double A, some combination of guys that you're not even going to matter in for the next like three years. Yep. Yeah, I I don't understand this. And then the Dodgers, can we just? They're running away with this fucking division. Of course. They're, I don't care. Arizona and fucking San Diego can overperform, win ninety games. They'll still lose that division by at least eight. Yeah. I, I, that's that's a fucking division. When it gets wrapped up right after the All Star break, we're like, yeah, really, yeah, we we know, yeah, right. We're not gonna be like, oh my god, they did it this early, and I'm even, even if it, the the season wasn't delayed, we'd be like, yeah, we know. Yeah, right, right. Nothing, nothing about the Dodgers would should surprise you. The Dodgers yeah. at this point are just like missionary sex. You know what you're gonna get. It's gonna be you're gonna enjoy it. It's just not the most exciting thing in the world anymore because it's exactly, exactly. what you think it is. Huh, exactly. Yeah, it's just it's it's consistent. It's good. You're gonna enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. That's it. Um, that's all we got for the NL West. Um, again, if you haven't figured this out by now, we have a Patreon, and that's Jones and for Sports. Not just take it deep. We are a Jones and for Sports production. <laughs> if you haven't found a way to come up with a dollar. Dig in your couch cushion, deposit it in the bank, send it over to the Patreon. You're getting way too much content for way too little money. Yeah. Um, and like I said, if you're a baseball guy who, if you're like me and E and you're going through withdrawals, sub- start submitting topics. We, I know me and you, we talk baseball a lot. Yeah. Don't even get me fucking started. This is all I, this is, this is like, I'm like an eight year old without Christmas right now. I'm, I need baseball. Yeah. Like to me, don't get me wrong. Like, especially this year, I was excited, you know, big, big excitement for the Yankees, you know, obviously Cole and everything. Mm -hmm. But I guess, I guess just being, uh, having other teams and other sports, like the Lakers doing well, like had my attention to that. Yeah. You know, and it was like that being thrown off and then everything's just like, ah. Yep. Oh, I hope you get something soon. Whether it's yeah, once or... once the Steelers lost to the Jets in Week 16, it yeah. was baseball season. Yeah, yeah. One, I hope well, I'm a Nick fan. What the fuck yeah. am I gonna watch? Uh, cheer for Dolan's coronavirus test. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Well, either way, if like I like I said, if you follow us on on social media and you live under a fucking rock. You would have to know by now that we have our our Patreon. Go yeah. fucking donate. The content is too good to be ignored. And it, it, frankly, all shows, whether it's locker room Sundays, full court shot, this that's take debatable. Now, that's debatable. Jones for sports regular. Yeah, you know, five to six podcasts just for a dollar. The bleacher creatures are coming out, or that's relaunching, and we have other shit coming down the fucking pipes. Four dollar. There's too much shit for a dollar. We spoil you people. So just just, just take that money. Just t- do it right now. Just dig your hand in a fucking couch cushion. You're bound to find at least 50 cents. Dig it out. Go out to your car. Go in your middle compartment. Right. Where you there, yeah, change. Go, hit the cup holder. Yeah, let's go. Right. You'll find – Go to go to – well, you can't go to the mall right now because they're all fucking closed. Thank you, China. But go find a wishing well. Go dig for pennies for all we care. We're trying to give you all the content at a price that's frankly unbeatable. Go join the fucking – come join the roster. We'll shout you out. You want to submit topics, we take that too. You want in on fantasy fantasy baseball whenever we whenever the season decides to you know, get going? There's a level for that too. We got, our, we got all our bases covered, no pun intended. Yeah. Come on. What's your excuse? But, uh, yeah, next week, NL Central, full breakdown. And the Pirates. We, oh, fucking, yeah. The Pirates rant's going to be good. Uh, well, the, well, the whole episode's going to be fucking good. 
Oh, yeah. But, yeah, specifically that, I will get heated. I might throw something. We don't know yet. Depends on how pissed I get. But either way, come join the team. Join us on Patreon. Go If you're not on Facebook for some reason or you're not already following the uh, MLB Home Run Hitters, that's where, you, that's where we tend to do most of our open source conversation, you know, about baseball. You want to pick me and E's brain, that's a great place to do it. Other than that, join the Patreon. We will see you all next week. And don't forget, take it deep.